Hello guys, it's Christina here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to share with you this Vita Von Tees in portrait that I did. And I'm going to be talking about my approach to portraits done in this style. Now I've been drawing in this style for a few years now and I really enjoy it for a number of reasons. And I feel like it slowly but surely is turning into my favorite go-to style of drawing um, celebrities. And my opinion is that for me this style of drawing gives me the right amount of realistic likeness with the person that I'm drawing and the right amount of this sort of like pop art more modern feel um, to the final piece. So I feel like because I've been doing so many portraits in this style over the years I've developed a little bit of a strategy when it comes to creating them and I'm gonna try and share my strategy with you really quickly. So the first thing that I do and I feel this is the most important step is to choose the right photograph. If you're drawing someone who's famous you really want to go for their for a photograph that shows their iconic look, um, their signature look, a photograph that captures who they are as artists, as people. So after you choose your photograph you will really want to look at it for a few minutes and that sounds a bit stupid but you really need to look at a photograph and you need to analyze it and you need to decide what are the things that make their features um, so unique and you need to decide um, what you should inclu include in your portrait to give the most information about their pose in the in the photograph. So the tricky thing um, in portraits like this is that you can't include uh, all the shadows that create the dimension in the photograph. So you need to decide what shadows bring the most information if that makes any sense. So for example let's talk about the shadow under her nose. If you look at the picture, the shadow is by no means as dark as her hair that is black. But the reason I would add this shadow and I would even emphasize it and make it so dark is that this shadow brings a lot of information about the way her head is positioned in this specific photograph and it gives a lot of information about the shape of her nose. So I'm going to focus on this shadow but I'll be willing to ignore all other shadows in that area because this will be, if I start adding them, it might be a little bit of a normal kill and it's gonna drag a lot of attention to her nose, which we don't wanna do. So another thing that's important to remember in my opinion in this style of portraits is that you, you're really trying to simplify things. Uh, in a lot of ways when you're drawing in this style you're trying to flatten the original image and you need to adopt a more minimalistic approach compared to when you're drawing a more traditional portrait. So for example let's look at her lips. So I won't put that line that would usually indicate where her upper lip ends and her bottom lip starts because adding this level of detail is going to distract the eyes um, when you look at the final portrait. There are other ways to emphasize things in this sort of portrait. So for example we're gonna ignore this line and we're gonna look at her mouth is in one solid shape which will be appropriate for this specific portrait but we're gonna give her lips this red color because she's famous for wearing this signature red lip. Okay, so having said all of this, let's talk about the sketching process. And I waited for the very end of this video to talk about it because I wanted to have the finished piece when I was talking about it. Now, in the beginning of this video, you saw me do an initial sketch on a white sheet of paper that was a different size than this. And later on you saw me um, drawing with my ink on this sheet of paper and this is just like a scrapbook sheet of paper I just thought it was very appropriate because it's this sort of 
wrinkly vintage paper um, type of thing and I thought it was just appropriate um, for her portrait um, specifically but anyway let's go back to the sketch so the reason why I did my sketch on a different sheet of paper and not on this one was first because I don't have that many sheets of this specific design so I didn't want to waste a sheet um, just in case I made a mistake when I was sketching. But the other reason is that every time I do a portrait like this I always, always color in my final sketch. So this is the sheet that you saw me do my sketch on. And the reason why I like to color my final sketch is because, as I said earlier, when you're creating a portrait like this, you are trying to flatten a three-dimensional image in a lot of ways. So for example, if we look at the eye, we're no longer thinking of the eye of like something that consists of an eyelid, eyelashes, pupil and so on and so forth, we are trying to come up with a shape that can represent all of that together. And this is what you're sketching in a way. So you come up with these abstract shapes that are supposed to represent someone's face and until you color them in, you can be sure that you did a good job. And as you can see here, there are a few differences between this drawing and this drawing. I changed the nose, changed the hand a bit, just in this area, and I changed, what did I change? I changed her eyebrow, I even changed the position of her beauty mark, slightly. And the reason I did that is because when I colored in my final sketch, I realized that it didn't look that much like her. This looks like Gita Von Tees a lot more than this does. But if I didn't color this in, I wouldn't have realized the mistakes that I made. And I would have transferred this sketch onto this sheet of paper and I would have repeated the same mistakes. Now, by no means do you have to go uh, that fancy with your coloring. I just did it for this video because I thought it would look um, nicer. But you can really quickly go over your sketch with a black marker or you can even use the pencil that you use for sketching just to make sure that everything is where it should be and everything is the shape it should be. So yes, this is basically my approach. I am by no means an expert, this is just the way I do things and hopefully this video was helpful to some of you and um, hopefully it will make you try um, doing some ink portraits. It's a lot of fun, they're kind of, they're very simple to do once you do, you do a few of them, you sort of um, get an idea of what you need to be looking for in a photograph and what you need to be adding um, into your drawing um, as far as details goes. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this drawing. Thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!